Mike Bond of MMA Junkie here with Oscar Willis of The Mac Life, and we are at the very late end of the night here in Cleveland. Uh, Jake Paul defeats Tyron Woodley by split decision in tonight's boxing match. The main event goes all eight rounds. I guess, Oscar, uh, your first reaction. Um, Tyron Woodley thinks he won. Jake Paul thinks he won. Who do you think won? I think Jake Paul won um, pretty clearly, to be honest. I, I was really surprised at the split decision. I thought, uh, I don't know, maybe the judges feel as tired as we do or something, but it was that was really bizarre for me. Um, and it's sort of it's a shame because it's left a question mark around it. Now there's talk of a rematch and stuff like that. I don't think it was that competitive. I think we saw basically, unfortunately, the same Tyron Woodley we've seen for the last few fights. You know, he, he gets in there and he just doesn't throw. He's looking for the perfect shot. He's looking to just sort of wait and time it correctly instead of just throwing. He's got the power to hurt people. He nearly had Jake out there. It felt like in the fourth round, just doesn't throw. Shame. Yeah. He nearly did have the perfect punch, though, in that fourth round. He hurt him pretty bad, had Jake, you know, bouncing off the ropes a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, does that just come down to basically what you're saying there? Like, Tyron didn't show the killer instinct he needed to in that moment. He had it. I think he had the biggest moment of the fight, yeah. but Jake had the more consistent performance through eight rounds. Well, Jake landed more cleaner shots, I guess, if you're going to judge it. that's At the time, it's hard to judge because it's very chaotic in there. But... Um, for me, there was, mo there was a moment where Jake landed a really clean shot and Tyron sort of flexed on him and said, it doesn't hurt. Well, if it doesn't hurt, you can just wade in there, eat a couple of shots to land that big one. You know, that, that fourth round could have been a knockdown because he was held up by the ropes in boxing. That should be a, a knockdown. Um, so, yeah, he, and then I was actually re-watching it. He knocks him down and then just follows him around the ring and doesn't throw again for another 45 seconds. Like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? Um, and it's a shame, man, because I think Tyron has come across so likable this week, which has always been a com consistent criticism of him in his career. But this week he's come across as fun, he's likable, been really well promoted, it has to be said. And uh, it's just a shame that it sort of didn't feed into his performance. Yeah, Showtime and I think him personally did a great job promoting this fight. Um, so I guess just give me from one to ten, what's your interest in a Jake Paul, Tyron Woodley rematch? Or zero to ten. You want to go that low? I won't go that low. I'm trying to think. Do, like, do we include? Does he get the tattoo in this scenario? Yes. If he gets the tattoo, then, dude, it's so funny because <laughs> I said, uh, sorry to go off to no, topic here. I said at the beginning of this week, like, man, the Colby Covington defeat, with all the politics around it, the personal hatred between the two, that was the most devastating loss of Tyron Woodley could ever experience. Then we go to Jake Paul, and he just lost to a YouTuber. He's had like four fights. And now it's like he can even get it even worse by getting a tattoo and losing again. How does he manage to up the stakes every time? Um, my interest is probably three, four. It depends, man. I don't know. But it's, it's, it felt big in there, you know? It, it felt big, so. And if you're Tyron, obviously you want this fight again because you want the money. bag. You want all the money. Yeah. This did tremendous on pay-per-view. Everyone was talking about it all week. They were talking about it. You know, tonight I saw social media was, you know, every single relevant fighter, pretty much UFC or boxing, was tweeting about this. So if you're Tyron, you absolutely chase that. Cool. But here's the question for you. If he doesn't get this rematch, what does the future hold for Tyron Woodley? Is he... You know, going to fight Hector Lombard and BKFC. I mean, that's exactly where my mind went, to be honest with you. I don't. If Tyron had won this fight and knocked him out really convincingly, he would have been able, I guarantee, to use the spotlight to leverage himself into a, a boxing match with a really high-level boxer, I believe. Um, it hasn't happened. I don't know. I, I don't really don't know what would happen if he lost again or if he doesn't get the rematch. It's probably back to MMA, you'd think, in one of the other promotions. Maybe. So uh, if the rematch doesn't happen, then what do you want to see out of Jake Paul? He can take a break. I wouldn't mind a break. Um, it's not a good enough answer. We need like an opponent or something <laughs> like that. Like, oh, cool. Do you know what I want to do after tonight? I want to take a break, but yeah, okay. it's not how this works. Okay, that's true. And we have so much more to do. Uh, if I, what, Jake Paul, I don't even really want to see the Tommy Fury. I, I need to see this footage of them arguing in the back because yeah. apparently they had a heated interaction earlier. So if I see that and that's exciting, then maybe Tommy Fury. But Tommy Fury didn't look that great tonight either. Um, I'm trying to think, maybe get Mike Perry out of his USC contract, fight Mike Perry. I don't He's know. He's got one left, I think. Yeah. Nate Diaz also yeah, has one fight left on his contract. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's interesting because the, the opponents have already always sort of presented themselves well for Jake and his team for them to pick. It's like there's always been an obvious next choice. I guess Tommy Fury is the obvious next choice, right? Yeah. And uh, to be fair, I feel like Jake could probably get I would say him. maybe as like a side potential option, I'd keep a close eye on that Anderson Silva, Tito Ortiz fight. Great point. Yeah, I, th I, uh, yeah, I see. You said it. I'm like, I'd watch Anderson fight him. <laughs> yeah, I, it, if Anderson, when Anderson schools Tito, um, yeah, let's do Anderson. Sweet. Any uh, last takeaways, anything you want to say about this night? Like you said, the crowd was amazing. Uh, 
the crowd, as Jake Paul pointed out multiple times, one of the more unique I've seen. I saw, you know, some kid came up to me and was like asking me to charge his camera because he needed to make his next YouTube video. And there's mm -hmm. people saying, you know, follow my subscription channel and such a young crowd from older to younger. It was very unique in here tonight, in my opinion. Yeah, it was. There was a moment when we were watching the fight ringside. I happened to look and in the front row, there was like eight different kids with DSLR cameras <laughs> filming it. Uh, it was very unique. It was very Gen Z, as I believe they say. Uh, there's loads of people getting pictures with people. And I was like, who are they? I don't know. Um, but it was entertaining. I, I, to be honest with you, I, I wonder if it's still because COVID had everyone locked up, if the crowds are still hot off that, cause like we've seen in the UFC. Right. Um, but the crowd was brilliant. And for a boxing crowd, very early. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, it was a good night, and uh, we're going to end it there. It is late. We are tired. Check out Oscar Willis's great work on the Mac Life. Keep it locked to MMAJunkie.com. We'll have all the coverage for you of this fallout from this event and uh, you know whatever other combat sports stuff is coming up in the month of September. So see you all. Have a good night, and we're going to try to get some sleep. Bye-bye. <laughs>